know, one of the frustrating things was uh, like they would ask data data center questions, like if there's an emergency in the data center, what do you do? The answer was never like protect the data or 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 uh, you know. Uh, remove the uh, i don't know servers from the network it was always like if there's an emergency evacuate because safety of human beings is most important it was always like these sort of questions that i was always like Hello everyone, welcome to CISA This Much. This is Aditya and today we have with us Sunil from uh, US. You are from US, right? Yeah, yeah, US. Yeah, so he has recently cleared his CISA um, in the month of uh, December last year. So Sunil, first of all, Hartish, congratulations for clearing one of, one of the most difficult certification and uh, welcome to the CISA club. <laughs> So Thank how do you. you feel? <laughs> so how yeah, does it feel? It is uh it's liberating. <laughs> it feels good to um because studying for this exam is very intense and difficult. So uh when when you clear it, you feel like a huge weight is off your shoulder. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh you know um uh, um uh, we will talk, like, we'll ask him a lot of questions, you know, but before that, uh, can you please introduce yourself, your background, your experience, and what made you choose CISA? Like, you know, what was the thing, you know, which, like, which you felt uh, the need of doing this certification at this time? Yeah, I, um, so my background is actually, I got a an undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering and when I graduated with that, I worked as a like software Oracle SQL programmer in a in a healthcare system for four years, for four and a half years. And while doing that job, I also did my MBA at the same time. Um, then when I graduated with my MBA, I wanted to pursue IT audit, and I began that. Uh, three years ago so i've been doing it audit now for three years so after after mba you have uh you you started working in it audits correct yeah okay all right and um so after about two and a half years of doing it audit i decided i want to start uh, studying and pursuing this CISA exam because, I mean, obviously it's important to have this certification as an IT auditor, but the concepts that appear on the exam, they help in a practical sense for your actual role, right? Like the entire IT pro audit process, the standards, signatures, firewalls, all of these are important for the uh, audit function itself. They'll, they'll help you when you're actually doing audits at work. So th it was basically two reasons. One is to, you know, it looks good on my resume to have CISA, but also it, it helps you with your audit career. So that's, those are the two main reasons why I pursued CISA. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I would like to add something here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, see, when uh, we talk about India, okay. And uh, many uh, developing countries like from Africa and Asia. What happens here is that, you know, first we pursue certification and then we think about, about entering in this area. But And mm. since you are saying you are already working for past uh, almost three years and then you decided like to give this exam. So yeah. uh, what's, uh, like, what exactly is the uh, culture in, in US? Like, like, uh, like, do people first go and take the experience and then, then think about these certifications or like, uh, because, you know, I have, I have seen people, you know, nowadays, especially from US and, and then North America, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they, they, they are, uh, you know, giving the exams first and then they are thinking about, you know, taking the internships and, you know, so uh, like what according to you should be the ideal way, like, you know, uh, first, should you go and work or first you should think about, you know, uh, giving the exam, uh, clearing the certification and then think about entering in this field? 
that's a good question. See, it 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 depends. Like, it it also depends on what the job is. Like, for example, I'm considered a senior IT auditor right now. When I was a a uh, just a IT auditor, that was my title. The CISA was not required for that role. Then for my senior IT audit role, which I, I began, I started that job and they told me that I should get this certification within a certain amount of time. Um, and I think it's, it, it's a good thing to kind of begin the job if you have certain experience already um, because then the experiences you learn in the job will help you for the certification exam. But there are obviously, I mean, it, it depends job by job. Obviously, if you're going to be like a, a physician, you need to go through medical school and get your MBBS or, or MD here in, in the U.S. before you, you know, start residency or become a doctor. But with with these IT certifications, I think it's, it's a little bit different. You can, I, I'm... Um, I think it's an, it's a good idea to get experience in that role. And then maybe concurrently, if you try to get the certification that will help that role, then, then that's ideal. Um, but there are, I mean, there are job postings here that say IT auditor and the requirement is you have to have your CISA. So they won't even consider you unless you have the CISA certification. So, I mean, that, and that's fine for them. I just think that this um, path that I took was, was ideal for me because I could like learn the IT audit process during the job. And then I was able to do the certification at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know what, the, the, the reason I'm you know asking this question is because uh, especially uh, here, like, you know, uh, even if, I, if even if I want a job as a junior IT auditor, uh, they keep this thing in their uh, job description that you know uh, CISA, uh, like uh, like if you if you have cleared the CISA, even if you don't have the certification, but if you pass the exam, it will be preferred. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like in in your like uh, yeah in in US especially uh, you know so people who are watching from US you know so for you guys you know it's a great opportunity like like you 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 don't have to you know directly think about the certification you can even uh, do some internship like you know for three or six months and you can just feel like like are you uh, do you really have the interest in this field like you know you can just try to, uh, you know, uh, explore, you know, various opportunities before deciding, you know, whether you want to do CISA or not. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. Like, like when I switched from that developer job to IT audit, I would not have gotten the IT audit job if I hadn't been in an IT position prior to that, even though I didn't have my CISA certification. So that IT job kind of gave me it told that employer, um, this guy has some experience with IT. He might be able to effectively audit these systems for this organization. And um, so that was kind of my prerequisite there. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Thanks a lot for that detailed uh, answer. <laughs> my next question to you is, uh, okay, how much time did it take for you? Again, this question, uh, there is something I have... Uh, I, I get answers ranging from two months till one year. I have seen people taking, you know, one year. I have seen people clearing this exam even within two months. Mm -hmm. What according to you should be the ideal, you know, time duration? And what according to you should a CISA aspirant, like how many hours should he devote like every day? So uh, I'll tell you what, what I think is ideal. And then I'll tell you what I think I, what, what I ended up doing, because what I did, I do not think was ideal, um, but I didn't really know that. Um, what I think is ideal is if you have little experience like me, um, I, uh, when, I, when I took the exam, I had, at that time, I only had like two and a half years of experience of IT audit. So if you have a, only a little bit of experience, I think you need to devote like, like five months at least. Um, and, uh, I guess if you have more experience, like, I think, I think officially they say 
they recommend like five years of experience. So if you have that five years of experience, maybe like maybe one or maybe two months, I'd say two months. Um, so that's what I think is ideal. What I ended up doing is um, I basically studied for two months and the first month it was mostly on weekends for like, I, I don't know, maybe a total of uh, four to six hours on like, Saturdays and Sundays total. Um, I didn't really study after work that first month. That So that was kind of my mistake. But then that second month, I studied for at least two hours after work every day. And then on weekends, I studied like maybe eight hours total uh, Saturday and Sunday every weekend. So that second month, I really did an intense um, course load. Um, but again, I, I, if you have little experience, I would suggest spreading out the study patterns and doing it over the course of like five months to really learn the process. And, um, yeah, because I do think having experience before taking this exam is actually very important. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, okay. And, uh, I would like to, uh, ask one more question here from mm -hmm. your answer only uh like uh, since uh, you, you had 3 years of experience uh did you find any situation wherein practically you were doing something else but when you are solving the question you know the answer expected from you by isaka was something else because again you know uh, people who are having a lot of years of experience you know they face this kind of difficulty wherein they, they find that, oh, practically I was not doing this. Okay, maybe uh, because there could be few things which are not practically possible as an IT auditor. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, from you, that answer could be expected by Isaka. Did you face these kind of confusion or situations like this during the entire process? Not necessarily uh, something that, like... I would have done differently in practice versus what they chose more, more in the sense that like some of the answer, the correct answers just seemed strange to me <laughs> um, when I was going through like the QAE and that sort of thing. And so in that sense, that's why I think it's important for people to study how ISACA gives their questions and what, you have to think like they do versus think about what you think might be logical. Like there, there was, you know, one of the frustrating things was like, they would ask data, data center questions. Like if there's an emergency in the data center, what do you do? The answer was never like protect the data or, 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 uh, you know, uh, remove the uh, I don't know servers from the network it was always like if there's an emergency evacuate because safety of human beings is most important it was always like these sort of questions that I was always like all right all right so uh do you have any last message to the people who are watching this video any last tip trick uh any anything you know which you want to add maybe like which can make their entire study process easier um, I would say uh, definitely do the question and answer database, but if you're doing well on that, it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean like you're going to do well on the exam. What you need to make sure of is that you understand the audit process um, in general, and that's where the experience kicks in. So, so um, don't like, like, don't just assume you'll do well just because you're you're doing really